You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So you woke up on Saturday uh, wondering if a season filled with grand expectations, championship expectations, immense promise uh, would be flush with disappointment. And that's exactly what was staring LSU in the face if they had gone on the road and struggled against Mississippi State in Starkville. You went to bed on Saturday making a legit case for LSU as the best team in the SEC. No qualifiers. And it's not because you beat Mississippi State. It's how you beat Mississippi State. That offense was elite. And that is what you need to win on a national level in 2023. Before the season started, we went over all of the defenses for national championship teams in the playoff era. And I pointed out how Georgia a year ago was 50, was in the 50s nationally in total defense. LSU back in 2019 was 59th in total defense. Bama in 2020, national champ, 71st in total defense. The thing that all the championship teams have in common is elite offense and good enough complementary defense. The national champions in the playoff era, here's their rank in total offense. Georgia last year, fifth. Georgia in 2021, 28th. Bama in 2020, fourth. LSU in 2019, first. Clemson in 2018, fourth. Bama in 2017, 15th. 2016, Clemson, 14th. 2015, Bama, the lowest, was 30th. And then 2014, Ohio State was ninth. Boil it all down. In the college football playoff era, you have had nine college football playoff champions. Seven of the nine have been in the top 15 nationally in total offense. That is the common thread. You got to be great on offense. And this LSU team on Saturday for four quarters against Grambling and for three quarters against Florida State have been awesome. Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, co-SEC players of the week. I don't think anybody's going to be complaining about the offense and the quarterback today. There should be no conversation therein. Jaden Daniels was absolutely spectacular. You wanted to see air yards? How about fourth and seven from the 33 they go for it? He airs it out, throws a touchdown. Jaden Daniels was awesome. You needed him to run the ball? He did. He was your leading rusher in the ball game with 15 carries for 64 yards and two rushing touchdowns. You need him to throw the ball? No worries. 30 of 34 for 361 and two scores. He completed his first 13 passes. He was awesome. Malik Neighbors, 13 catches, 239 and two scores. And Malik Neighbors would have broken Kayshawn Booty's singles game receiving record if this were a game. If they didn't have to just say, hey, bro, take the second half off, he'd have broken that record. He had gone well over 300 in that ballgame because Mississippi State had no answer at all for Malik Neighbors in that ballgame. As far as running backs, I mean, th there's, this isn't a question anymore. Logan Diggs, Caleb Jackson, those are your best two. Now, Brian Kelly, when he spoke with the media on Monday, talked about how Caleb Jackson still has to come along with pass protection and learning the game and all that. It's very true. And there are roles for veterans like Josh Williams and Noah Kane. That's why you're going to continue to see them. But Logan Diggs is your best threat as a running back. He is your most versatile threat. And then Caleb Jackson is a powerful back who is essentially could act as your closer, who can come in fresh legs in spots late in the half or late in the game and just dump truck defenses like he did that poor safety from Mississippi State. You have got to feel great about your offense coming out of that game on Saturday. Uh, defensively, this team feels like it's found its sea legs a little bit. The, the second half against Florida State was a real challenge. Much of the game trying to guard Keon Coleman in the secondary was a real challenge. The first three drives against Grambling were a challenge. Since then, it feels like this team defensively has started to find itself. And one of the things that was so impressive about what the defense did Saturday against Mississippi State is they went on the road in Starkville without their two most veteran defensive players. Omar Spates has played in 47 career games. 
Greg Brooks has played in 50 career games. Those are your two most veteran defensive players by a mile, and you went on the road to Mississippi State without them both, and you absolutely dominated that football game. Mississippi State put up 201 yards of total offense. On the first play of the game, State completed a pass for 12 yards. After that, they went three and out four straight times. They scored at the end of the first half after a 52-yard run by Woody Marks, and they scored at the end of the game when LSU emptied the bench, and the, the issue was far from ever being at hand at that point. So your defense was awesome. Major hat tip to Whit Weeks, true freshman linebacker in his third ever game. On the road in the SEC opener, he gets the start and led your team in tackles. We've talked we've talked for months about how high this coaching staff is on Whit Weeks, but that for anybody as a true freshman making your third career game, making your first start on the road in conference playing to lead the team in tackles and be as awesome as he was all the second play of the game. After that 12-yard reception, he shot a gap and got a TFL. Whit Weeks was awesome, and I think what you've solidified now, Greg Penn on the inside, Omar Spates when you get him back, Whit Weeks, West Weeks, that's going to allow Harold Perkins to go be Harold Perkins. In this game, Perkins was disruptive. Four tackles, a sack, two TFLs, and a pass defended. That's what you want. Be everywhere and just fill up the stat sheet in every different column because that's what Harold Perkins is great at. And now that you've solidified inside backer, it allows him to go do that without any hesitation. And your secondary was solid. Uh, now, it was aided by a great pass rush. Your front seven got four sacks, seven TFLs, four passes defense, four, four quarterback hits. When you're constantly pressuring the quarterback with your front seven, it's going to be a great asset for your secondary that is coming along. We saw young players like Ryan Yates get a whole bunch of playing time at safety. They brought Major Burns down into the box when LSU went dime. Ryan Yates went to free safety, just kind of playing center field. He's much better in coverage than Major Burns. It it works. It fits. You're starting to see them figure themselves out now as they're moving through this season. A couple of other things from Saturday. Um, Will Campbell got pulled from the game in the fourth quarter after his fourth penalty, and you could see Brian Kelly, uh, the, the TV cameras caught Brian Kelly uh, yelling, I don't effing care, it's his fourth effing penalty. And they pulled Will Campbell out of the game. To be very clear, I am in no way at all whatsoever concerned about Will Campbell. He's awesome. He's an All-American caliber player. He's the best offensive tackle LSU's had maybe ever as far as talent, and his career is living up to it. Everyone has a bad day. It's just the nature of... Just the nature of of the game of football. Everybody at some day is going to have your worst day. I'm not worried at all about Campbell. What is of consequence from that decision is when they decided to take Will Campbell out of the game, they moved Emory Jones to left tackle. And what that tells you is who they feel their best five and best six are. So we saw Lance Hurd, the first full possession of the second quarter, go in at right tackle. And LSU had some problems. They gave up a couple of sacks. They had a penalty on Lance Hurd on that drive. That was their first possession where they didn't score points but you can tell what they favor which is they'll start Frazier at right guard Emory Jones at right tackle when they bring Hurd in they Frazier comes out Jones goes to right guard and Hurd to right tackle but when Campbell came out they moved Emory Jones over to left tackle so that is sort of telling it if God forbid knock on for Micah anything were to happen to Will Campbell where he had to come out Emory Jones kicks over and is your left tackle pretty clearly as they see it and y'all, when you come out of Saturday and you look at the Southeastern Conference results and you look at Georgia trailing South Carolina at home 14-3 to at half, that Georgia offense is a mess. I don't know how many times we had to talk about it. not Not only losing your quarterback, but also losing your offensive coordinator that everybody at Georgia thought was the magic unlock finally for that offense. Well, he's in Baltimore now. Monken's in Baltimore now. Stetson Bennett's in L.A. with the Rams. They're figuring themselves out offensively still at Georgia. Bama, ugly win at South Florida, 17-3. to Tennessee, double-digit loss to a bad Florida team. Arkansas lost at home as an eight-point favorite to BYU. It, uh, you're legitimately having a conversation today, legitimately, if LSU is the best team in the SEC. We'll learn a lot about Ole Miss this week going to Bama. And yes, Georgia is going to be the default for many and should be. They've earned it. 
but it's not as easy and cut and dried as it would have been at the start of the season or either of the last two years. Because you could make a legitimate case today that LSU is the best team in the Southeastern Conference, and they're going to have an awesome shot to be 7-1 and one going to Tuscaloosa that first Saturday in November with everything to play for. You just got to avoid the landmines that are littered in an SEC schedule. But this team with some veteran presence, some young guys playing better, and a favorable schedule looks like they are primed to make that run if they can avoid those landmines. LSU beats Mississippi State 41-14, to and you got to be feeling a lot better about that team today than you did two weeks ago on this day when we were talking after the loss to Florida State. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.